Hello everyone. I hope everyone has joined the webinar. Thank you for joining today's webinar. I am from Team Medit India and my name is Dr. Riya Thakkar, your host for today's webinar. As we see, this is the second webinar that we are holding today as part of our outreach program. Today's session is all about troubleshooting areas in Medit scans and to learn some tools that can help you to scan and proceed faster. In here, we have compiled a short list of everyday clinical hurdles users face, and we have come up with some tool-based solutions for them. So without further delay, let's start. First up, we have a common query of overlapping of unnecessary data onto our required area of scan. There can be multiple reasons for this, like constant moving of soft tissues, frequent scanning on the same area again and again, etc. So due to this, sometimes we end up capturing lots of soft tissues in our scan, leading to artifacts and noise. What can happen is if we send this data to the lab, they might reject it, or even if they accept it, they would be struggling to edit that scan because it will be uh, the artifact will be on the area of concern in such cases how about we fix the scan ourselves and send it to the lab let's see how we can do that as we all know in medit link we have three trimming tools that can be used to edit our scans first is polyline brush tool uh, polyline second is the brush tool and third is the quick trimming tool we all might have used the polyline tool to edit our scans. But as we see over here, there is an artifact. And let's see what happens when I use to edit it with the polyline tool. So here I have selected the area using the polyline tool. What has happened? As we see here, it has also trimmed off a portion of the scan beyond the selected drawn area. So why did this happen? This is this can be because the polyline tool cuts everything beyond the drawn surface in the camera direction. So you need to position the scan in a way that other parts don't intersect with the drawn polyline tool in that area. So to make this easier, we can also use the brush tool. Okay. Let me even tell you that the brush tool is the only tool which can be used to select the select and trim the intaglio surface of the scan. This can be enabled by using the manual mode of editing in the brush tool. As you see, now I, I have selected the intaglio surface. Once I select it, the intaglio surface, is, the artifact is already gone. OK, clean and clear. This is how we can use the brush tool to eliminate the artifacts. Now, if you have any floating uh, artifact on into your scan, which is not attached to your primary scan, in such instance, you can use the quick trimming tool. By selecting the quick trimming tool, you can check the artifact it has disappeared. So this is the beauty of using the editing tools. It is much quicker and easier. You do not have to face inconveniences of calling the patient once you do it. Let's see what's next. 
so as we discuss over here we have already talked about the overlapping of scan data that happens due to unstable soft tissues or frequent sc uh, scanning onto the same area again and again although we now know about how to edit that scans but let's see how we can avoid that overlapping tissues onto our soft, uh, onto our scan in this case i have captured a beautiful emergence profile now to preserve this i am using the lock area tool to lock that area onto my scan the function of using this lock area tool is when you select the surface of the scan of a scan and once you do the scan again it will not alter that part wherever whatever the tissues are or whatever the noise around it is it will not alter that area so here i have selected and locked this gingiva area by using the lock tool after locking i am scanning again as you see now even after scanning there there are no changes on the gingiva in that area it is only scanning the scan body so this way you can use the lock area tool to safeguard your data just to show you there were two models used in the last video one with a good gingiva or we can say the emergence profile model and the second was one with the trim gingiva model the second scan that we had performed was on the uh, trim gingiva but because we had locked that part it did not cover the trim gingiva or the altered gingiva this is another example where the lock area tool can be used in the live window you will notice a blue area which is the prep tooth but here the prep tooth has been locked and the other areas of the arch are scanned before after this the prep tooth is unlocked and the rescanning is done on that area this time it has been only focused on the prep tooth so why was this done this was done because the gum around the prep tooth was bleeding and to handle it better uh, the doc wanted to manage the area separately so to do it they, he first scanned the other areas of that scan uh, into the arch and then scanned the prep tooth it is a bit like taking a general photo and then zooming in for a closer look in that surface so this is the beauty of using the lock area tool these were some of the examples from our end to use the log area tool but you can explore the tool and use it in various conditions you have understood the function like it is used to uh, lock that scan lock the area of a scan now let's go to the next one this is the most common query that we have got about the scan stops while scanning the edentulous e scans so for this there can be various factors like moving data and to control this there is a tool that is already been there in the metatlink scan page that is example uh, what is the tool called as it's called as control scan depth so let's understand the concept of control scan depth and how can we use it over here what does scan the uh, scan depth mean so scan depth refers to the range or distance at which the scanner is capable of capturing details into the oral cavity if i say in easier terms it means that how deep your scanner can go into the oral structures effectively so let's take an example of fov field of view in a camera think of an fov as the area that the camera can capture in a single shot similarly the scan depth is an in, in an intraoral scanner is the depth or distance that the scanner can capture in one single frame uh, scan depth is calculated from the tip of the uh, scanner 
to the object or the surface of the tooth object uh, surface of the tooth so let's check an example to understand this concept better in this video as you see my scanner is stable at an optimized distance from the object and i have decreased the scan depth to the lowest because of this my scanner is only able to capture the occlusal surface at first but let's see once i increase the scan depth it will also start capturing the lingual and the buccal surface of the tooth as well as the gingiva around it so this is the beauty of using the scan depth tool now let's see where we can use this the best function of using the scan depth is you can control it in meditlink so the best use of controlled scan depth is in edentulous area for example patient with ridge resorption may prove challenging while scanning especially in the mandibular arch as there is lots of moving data around it in such instance the scan depth can be kept at the lowest so that it does not capture the floor of the mouth or the tongue or any other extra soft tissues around the arch bone this way we are decreasing the fov of the scanner from the tip another thing we can also use it in implant cases for example where you want to capture scan bodies and there are moving tissues which lead to noise to avoid this you can always play with the scan depth and find your way to scan it appropriately you can also use it in prep cases where there is a deep margin and you want to capture uh, and uh, you want to capture the whole tooth in one frame so in such instances you can use and play with the control scan depth tool this is uh another thing about how can we use the mandibular movements in our regular day life so uh let me tell you about mandibular movements and let's see how it can help us my friend has recorded the mandibular movement of this patient in mandibular movement you can record four bites one is the habitual bite second is the left and the right lateral movement and the protrusive bite as well once you record that you can check uh, check the deviation into occlusal map so in occlusal map you get different colors blue one uh, blue indicates that there is no contact in between the arch red green and uh, uh, yellow indicates that there are various uh, uh, contacts in different measurements the values are already indicated into the occlusal map so this way it can help you and guide you for further diagnosis also i would like to tell you something about this that the mandibular tool movement will only be enabled once you have the uh, recorded the maxillary and mandibular data with the first and second bite aligned with each other now let's see what is the importance of re recording this dynamic movements for example the most important thing that i feel is for recording about this dynamic movement is you can send these jaws uh, jaw movements to your lab so they can use the file while planning your occlusion in this case the lab will not only have the static occlusion but also the habitual bite of the patient on this basis the lab can design the crowns this will help the clinicians to eliminate the extra chair time that is required after crown cementation for adjusting adjusting the occlusion also you can use this uh, use this in uh, to check the old crowns when there is a patient that regularly comes to you with a complaint of dislodged or uh, chipped ceramic in such instances you can record the free or habitual uh, bite of the patient and you can uh, check the check the guidelines present in the occlusal map in this way you can help you can yourself evaluate if the process is is designed in accordance with the jaw movement of the patient and it can also help you and aid in a treatment planning okay
so this is something that we have found is for example imagine if you have a scan body whose cat file is not there in merit link in such situations you can first ask your manufacturer to provide you with a cat library of that scan body or at last if you are not able to find it you can email at india st at medit.com and you can ask us the scan library and we can send it to you as well so once you receive the file you can import the cad file into the merit link software but let's see how we can import it here i have already added a scan body stage from the stage management in the scan body stage in the scan body stage click on ai scan body matching feature once you click on ai scan body matching feature you have to go to the scan body library tab and search for the scan body that you require for instance i am trying to find the alpha biotech chc scan body which currently is not available into my metlink software so fortunately i do have the cad file of this uh, of this scan body with me i have stored it into my local pc so i just need to get that file with its other supporting uh, supporting files and import it into the medit structure uh, medit uh, software so i can add library from the uh, plus button that is there over here select my folder this is very important that you have to select the folder not only the cad file because the scan library consists uh, consist of other informations like about your implants and everything else so it consists of supporting documents that come with it so you always have to import a folder not only the scan file once you select it your scan body will be imported over here now as you see i have the alpha biotech cfc i can select it assign it and proceed further for my scanning now uh, this is something that we have caught for example if you are not able to troubleshoot cases uh, or something that is not you are not able to manage it so at last what you can do is send a case to us but let's see how you can send that case to us how you can export a case from medit click on the setting select the case converting tool in the case converting tool you can select your own uh, select the case that you want to export name it according to your preferences now you can store that into the folder for example here i have stored it on him on my desktop you can locate it and store anywhere wherever you want so here i have exported my medit x file now as you see it is not the regular files that you export in stl or other formats this is the whole case that you are exporting to uh, in the medit x format so if you are having any troubleshooting or if you want us to uh, check the how the scanning is performed or anything else you what you can do is you can export this cases uh, export such case in medit x format send to your dealer or you can also send to medit in this terms we will be able to help you better so this was a short presentation from us regarding uh, tools that can help you to cross your hurdles every day and uh, let's have the floor open for q and a now also let me tell you that this is the qr code for joining our whatsapp uh, user group you can join there also there is an important thing that i would like to request you please register yourself into medit academy let me tell you about medit academy what is medit academy is a short uh, is a online platform where you can learn everything about medit it consists of short tu uh, tutorials and courses which can help you to learn and grow with your medit software and scanner okay so here there is a question about why i have to use the scan body library while scanning okay 
So we have a feature called as AI matching feature, which consists of various scan body libraries in that. So if, for example, sometimes you're not able, uh, there is some tough, a soft tissue that is coming in between your scan body, or you're not able to get the full surfaces to cover your scan. In such cases, you can select the scan body from the AI matching feature, and this will help you to directly match your scan body in that case. There is another question like, will control scan depth affect the time of scanning? So, uh, no, the control scan depth will not affect the time as it is used to decrease and increase the depth of the scanner. Okay. Uh, show cases where you have done scanning of mandibular edentulous area. Uh, yes, so let us give you some cases. Let us share some cases about how is this done. We will send it in the group across in that way. Okay, so there is a question like, is it necessary to delete extra scan of the soft tissue? Well, uh, it is not necessary to delete extra scan, but whatever artifacts are lying over the area of concern, those uh, artifacts need to be deleted as I would suggest that you should clean that area of concern as clean as possible. How to record multiple scans in single case? Uh, okay, doc. So there is a uh, there are some options in stage management tool where you can add multiple scans like pre-op scan and other types of scan in that. If you require, we will also share a video upon it on our WhatsApp group about how to scan how to record multiple scans in a single case. There is another question like, how do I send my scan to my lab? So in the upgraded version in MeditLink, you can uh, add lab through your partners. So you can, uh, there is a, uh, let us send you some video on it. There is a symbol like squared in that you can go and uh, there is an option of selecting partners. So from there, you can select the partner tab and go to the cloud and select the lab that you want to add in your section. So if there are any other questions, like you face anything, some troubleshooting or something, you can always mail us at indiasd.medit.com. Thank you for joining today's webinar and we will see you soon later.